People ask why treeless, and of course they're referring to a treed saddle versus treeless saddle. And yes, there is a tremendous difference between the two, but most often ignored the purpose of a tree. And a lot of times people do not understand why there's a tree in the first place, but it's something that we're accustomed to, so we take it for granted that is the foundation of how to ride a horse. In fact, the tree itself is mainly designed for man's purpose of carrying equipment such as shovels, guns, packs, and so forth, where you could have a choice of securing things on the right side or left side, depending if you're right-hander or left-hander. And that was the main purpose of the tree. As you go back centuries, you'll find that treeless was there and always has been. What, is, what has happened in, uh, over a certain number of years is treeless did not evolve with its time. And uh, currently what we find is the, the improvements with treeless saddles are giving such a protection to the horse and comfort to the rider that obviously there is nothing better. And for instance, I just want to show you a little something about treed saddles. <clears throat> the uh, misconcept is when you look at the saddle, uh, you are led to believe that the size of the saddle is what gives much more service of weight distribution. In reality, a tree is much smaller than the saddle itself, and the areas of contact are pretty limited to four corners. And why I say four corners, if you take on a used saddle the uh, leather, you undress the saddle itself, you'll find that really there's only four corners that are really been worn. And those corners in it, for instance, a 16 inch saddle represents approximately 80 square inches. Now keep that number in mind, we'll get back to that. On the other hand, a tree is generally always convex, and your horse's back is concaved. That is called bridging. So in reality, the saddle is bridging, it's bridging over what's called the sweet spot. The sweet spot is the area, the lowest part of the horse's back, where naturally you would be sitting if you're riding bareback. Now, what is occurring here is that's not natural for the horse. So we want to bring you back into reality and put you in the seat where you'd be sitting if you're riding bareback, but offering all the protection to the horse and the rider that are available. So basically, the treed saddle, and if I may give a little anecdote here, is the Pony Express would ride for two, three days and trade in a saddle. No, they would trade in their horse, and they would get a fresh horse, but keep their saddle. So it's a good example. The saddle was not designed for the horse, it was designed for the rider. If you take, for instance, the military back in Civil War, the private would wait in line with the saddle they were handed, and they would pick a horse. So that saddle was not made for that horse. So the big difference is, between the tree and the horse, there is really nothing other than, obviously, the pad. And pads came about when we found that we had problems with the horse's back by having a rigid piece of equipment there. So, you can imagine hiking 10 miles with a wooden shoe that doesn't twist or turn versus a treeless saddle that has the flexibility to travel with the horse and all its movement. So that's the big benefit of the treeless saddle versus the tree. You can experience not only the interaction with you and your horse, but also the performance of your horse. So please follow the other recommended uh, questions and answers to get more answers to some of your other questions.